Hello everybody and welcome to um, a very basic tutorial of the live loop feature on the GarageBand app for the iPad. If you've got an older iPad or if you haven't updated it in a while, you may find that um, the live loop feature is not on your iPad. Um, so you may need to update it and if you've got a smaller iPad like a mini, um, it may be that you don't have enough space to have it. So if you haven't got it, you can work on it. Now, um, today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of basic things with the live loops. Um, I'm going to show you how to turn the app on, how to create a song in live loops, how to record your work so that you don't lose it, um, how to work inside the tracks to make smaller changes that are impossible with the grid, um, looking at how to create a beginning, a middle, and an end to your piece so it sounds a little bit nicer, and um, looking at transitions in your music. So, let's get started. GarageBand is the app for me right here. Um, it's kind of red, orange, yellow with a white guitar over the top of it. So if you tap on that and you've already worked in it, you'll see something that looks like this. Um, if you've never worked in GarageBand before, um, just wait a minute and as soon as you see me go to new song, that's how what yours will look like. So to create a new song, once you're in, you're going to press this plus button up at the top, okay? And once you press to create a new song, most of you will start automatically here with the tracks, um, and maybe you've already played with these. These are quite fun. I highly recommend them all. Um, but the live loops are here, and it's featured more as a grid as opposed to the tracks. So if I tap on that, it will give me quite a lot of musical styles to choose from, okay? If you press new, that's going to invite you to create all of your own loops, which I think is... Um, while it's possible, they don't sound anywhere near as nice as the other ones. And so for a beginner, I really would recommend that you choose something that's already in the app. Okay, so I'll pick Chill. What happens now is it loads um, an enormous variety of loops for you. Okay, and each loop um, is designed to be able to be repeated. So if I tap on one of these boxes all by themselves, you hear just the one loop. And every time it goes around, it'll repeat. The lovely thing with this app is that it's also made it really easy for you to create your own things that sound nice. So if you click on one of these little arrows at the bottom, it'll play all of the loops in that column. Okay, so maybe... Okay, so they've also organized them in such a way that you could just honestly go straight down the line and it would make a song that sounded pretty good. Okay, so once you've kind of played around with them, I highly recommend you listen to all of them on their own. Um, and even if you make a mistake, it's okay because I'll show you in a minute how to go into the tracks to fix it. So before you do that, though, you're going to have to record. Okay, so just like anything, it's the red circle here. And once you press it, um, it'll give you a count off if you've had that, if you've got that selected, and then you can just start messing with it. So that's my very short song. So now that I've recorded something, I've got a new option, and it's up here. And this is the Tracks menu, okay? So when you click on Tracks, okay, it'll switch you into this view, which is really useful for editing purposes. So, um, as you can see, my song is nine measures long, okay? So if you're somebody that's into, that knows about measures, that's what these symbols up here are telling you. Um, and if you noticed, when I just tapped over here, um, be careful, because when you get in here immediately, you've got them all highlighted, and it looks like none of them are highlighted, because they're all highlighted. Um, so be careful, because if I were to press, for example, delete at this moment, it would delete all of them. Ah, which is a great time to learn where the undo button is, which is right here. Okay, so the great thing about working with the loops is that since these are all loops, they you can click on one of them, and you can change the length and make them longer or shorter or whatever you want them to be, okay? And if they don't pop up as a loop already, okay, so like usually there's a little, um, like a circle with an arrow on it here, and if you want it to be that, you can just press loop, and then you can extend it or shorten it 
to however long you want it to be. Well, you get the idea. Yes. Takes a smaller finger than mine. All right, so that's how you do that. You can choose to create the loop, okay, or it'll be in here already as a loop. Um, so, once you've got something that you kind of like, then you can start really making it yours. Um, let me show you quickly, if when I go back to my songs, I've done quite a lot of these. So a song like this one, while it sounds very good, okay, there's nothing, I mean, all these, um, all of these sound quite good, the live loops. They're designed to sound good. Um, but if I have a whole song, okay, this is like 30 measures long, and as you can see, just looking at it, this is all the same stuff over and over and over and over again, which is really not what you want. You want, when you're creating in these apps, you don't want to be limited by what the app tells you you can and can't do in the sense of, oh, I'm just going to press on one of these and be like, yeah, I did that myself. That's not, that's not real creating. That's just listening to what somebody else did. So just looking at this, you can see it hasn't got a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and there's no, nothing that, there's no variety here. So um, that's just a recording of someone pressing one of them and letting it run. So this is one that I created, okay? Not the best. I'm sure you could find <laughs> loads of really, really wonderful ones on YouTube. So um, what I've done here is I've created a beginning, okay, where I've only used one layer here, a middle where I've used quite a lot of layers, okay, and an ending where I've used, again, very few layers, okay? Um, and in order to create transitions between music, it's just like when you're writing a story, um, or like a trilogy, for example, you've got to have something that connects all of these stories, or in this um, case, kind of sections together. So it could be, for example, a character. And for us, it's a sound. So I extended, for example, here, I extended this sound from here all the way into here so that these two sections sound a little bit more similar and the transitions aren't so harsh. Okay, so we'll take a quick listen to this. Um, and I extended, you know, this all the way through and my ending, I used the stock one that they gave me in the, in the app, the very last little arrow that played all of them at the same time. And I think this is quite a nice intro, all things considered, you know? So you've got a kind of a quiet intro to get started before the next thing. Okay. And this sound, I want it to be in for longer, so I've extended it, okay? And this one I started now, and it's going to become more important as we come over here, where there are fewer layers. Okay, so this sound has been going on. It's been going on since here, and I did that on purpose. Okay, so I've taken the music that it's that's already there with the live loops, and I've done something creative with it. I mean, that's what I'd really like to encourage you to do as well. So. Um, to just kind of recap, okay, I think you guys could figure out the turning on and the creating the song and the recording. Um, but working inside the tracks like this, when you press this button here to go from the grid to the track, okay, um, can really give you a lot of freedom in, and it's creative license to kind of extend your loops, to make things shorter, to correct your mistakes, okay? Because, or, or maybe there's one sound in a set of loops that you hate. Um, for me, there's one. It's... I think it's this one. Oh, I hate it. It just, that song, or not the song, but the, the noise just really bothers me. So the wonderful thing about that is that then I can, um, I can record this whole thing and then I can go in and delete this particular sound if I don't like it. Okay. Um, and I also highly recommend that you look at your song in, in a series of sections, a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you have enough, the right amount of layers to make that happen. Um, but in order to do that, you will need to do a little bit of trying around or messing with things until it starts to sound the way you want it to sound. 
So um, I really hope that this has been helpful. And um, if you have any questions, you're always free to leave something in the comments for me. And yeah, we'll see you next time.